Let's get, get started. started. Got it. So, so I am here with Kat Caliandro, and, and we are going to talk about, about the Dance Safe, safe. one of the absolute, absolute most important resources that we have here in our dance space to make sure, make sure that we are that we safe, are healthy, healthy, and happy, and happy as we are all um, um, participating, participating in the wonderful, wonderful and beautiful art of art dance, dance that we have that just grown to love. I hear feedback somewhere in my ear. And we're going to talk about the Dance Safe and why it's such an important resource for the dance community. So um, I'm going to introduce Kat, even though it seems like Kat has so many fans, we don't necessarily really need to introduce uh, introduce them, but I'm going to go through the bio. Uh, Kat's done so much stuff, they were like, oh, you know, what you can do. Most important thing right now is going back to school. Yes. For their masters. Yes, that's the one. That's the one. That's it. Did you say, did you say you just finished finals? I just finished my first semester. You did it. I got three more. Everyone's like, are you excited? You finished? I'm like, I didn't finish. I have three more to go. Like, we're not even close. Think about it like this. You only have to go three more times. Oh my gosh. And we actually ended up like my friend and I got a few people removed because they were creating unsafe spaces. And we were like, really? how has this been going yeah. on for so long? So really? it's been a really? it's been a very um, emotional semester, to say the least. But, you know, we're here. We're doing it. We are here, and right. that and that's what matters. We're <laughs> here. We can continue we're doing. Continue doing, doing it. So mm-hmm. that's what that's what's most mm-hmm. important. So Kat was born, so Kat was born and raised in Houston, Houston Texas, Texas. Received her BFA in dance, and dance, and dance purchase. purchase. Uh, since uh, then, Kat has worked with a host of other people, um, including Ty Stiorio, Mike Esperanza, Hayden Frederick, uh, Jason Gorman, Julia Irons, J.C. Royal. I am just Sonia Taya, uh, Andrew Winghart. I can't even name everyone who has wanted to work with Kat in this space. Uh, They've been featured in Dance Spirit Magazine, Dance Teacher Magazine, and Dance Informa. Have been a guest on Dance Dance Podcast, podcast, as well as Weird Adults and Bartender Podcast. Uh, Kat's been in a few films, films, supporting uh, supporting characters, as well as dance and neighborhood music video, RIP to my youth, which I feel all the time, every day, daily, I'm saying, you know, (laughs) rip to my youth, um, which is a a short film directed, um, uh, also a short film directed directed called Sync. Um, you're um, a choreographer, choreographer Trevor, Trevor Wesley, Wesley's official, official, official 360 music video, Chivalry is Dead, and a choreographer for an episode of Alone Together on Freeform. Um, so, so, lots and lots of great lots stuff. And, and, and you're pursuing your masters, masters at the University of at Arizona. Arizona. What are you getting your masters in? Your masters in? Dance, fine arts, education, and then I'm going to start studying um, psychology as well. I'd like to do something with that. I just love right. psychology. Right. So right. first step, right. first step, and then we're going to see how, how we do. <laughs> Wonderful. So yeah, I know that we can find you studying very hard very for your hard master's, for your at, master's at University yeah. of Arizona, but you're also on celebrity dance convention and heat dance, dance convention. So if you're traveling that circuit, please look for Kat. Look for amazing, Kat. Amazing, 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 amazing educator. Amazing so educator. we're so happy to have so you happy here. To have you here. Thank you so much. And the primary reason we have you here today is to specifically talk about the Dance Safe, which is a collective of dancers who advocate for survivors of abuse and for creating safe dance spaces through education, healing, and accountability, which I have a feeling we're going to talk a lot about accountability today, um, because I think that's where we are in this space. I think we know what's happening. Mm-hmm. It's a matter of what are we going to do about it and what are we going to make other people um, do about it as they, as they make the pledge to make sure this is a safe place for um, everyone. Mm-hmm. Um, so welcome back. We always love chatting with you. We always love your insight. Uh, you have immersed your, and we already, we all know Cat pulls no punches. So everybody get ready. <laughs> We're here. We're here. We're here. We're here. We're ready. You have immersed yourself in every fast of the dance There are lots of shifts and conversations being had right now about the changing culture of dance, starting at the studio level, all the way to professional companies and our companies and all that kind of great stuff. What are you most proud about the work that's being done by the dance safe? I'm proud that we didn't give up honestly Mm -hmm. i i i feel like our mission is just to try Mm -hmm. to just try we know that we know nothing at all and that through community and collaboration we can do so much work together and i feel really proud of um just the fact that we've held on it's hard it's hard work and we have so many organizations that we collaborate with and we talk to and we love and that educate us and 
Um, I'm, I'm really proud of that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Hanging in there because you're right. It's exhausting, it's exhausting work. work. It's yeah, exhausting, it is. Work. exhausting work. Um, um, to start, to at, the start at the beginning, because some, because people, some who people, people who are out there watching, all of, watching, our, Instagram all of our, family, Instagram our Instagram family, all of our Facebook, Facebook, I was going to say Facebook, Facebook family, <laughs> um, what is the dance safe exactly? And in what situation would someone find it beneficial to reach out to the dance? Sure. So the dance safe was created by our founder as a dance safe. Like okay. their idea was that it's a safe, not like, not like, oh, it's safe, but like an actual safe with a lock and a key. You contact the dance safe, you spill out harm or things that have been hurting you and maybe things that you've held in and you've never told anyone before. And when it started that way, it was so awesome. And I was like, oh my gosh, who runs this page? How do I get involved? You're amazing. Mm-hmm. What you're doing is amazing. And Um, I, I stepped up and took a, a a role with them and, oh my gosh, they taught me so much, like talking about accountability. Like I swear learning from the, our founder who's Jojo Diggs, like Mm -hmm. she's just so brilliant and amazing and willing. And, you know, the freedom movement has been such a huge, um, inspiration of, of ours and such great educators, um, as well as so many others. But when we took it on, um, there was a few of us that were like, okay, we can't let this go. We got to take this on. And there's not going to be any hierarchy. We're just going to do it as a team. We're just going to figure it out. And we tried. And then we're like, okay, we're all just kind of like, not really sure what to do. So my friend, Emily and I were like, okay, we'll help make decisions. But as far mm-hmm. as it goes, there's no hierarchy. We're still just going to focus okay. on this. We're going to center survivors. And as we continued to get disclosures, we were like, ah, like, what do we do with this information? Mm-hmm. So we started to reach out more to Freedom Movement, to Apala, to uh, Self Reclaimed, to DWEA, mm-hmm. and started to make YPAD, of course, and started to try to make connections because we were like, we can't do this alone and we don't want to. Mm-hmm. So um, Jerry Brown said this, like, how do we create a coalition? So that's really been the mission of the Dance mm-hmm. Safe to center voices of survivors, to hold people accountable to figure mm-hmm. out how to hold people accountable and figure out how to move forward when mm-hmm. we do hold people accountable. We're also trying to bring attention to people that cause harm. Like, mm-hmm. Hey, this person, if it's public and the survivors are on board, then mm-hmm. we're, we're sharing that information. And we're mm-hmm. also lately trying to bring attention to people who are doing good work in the industry, educators mm-hmm. that people like and feel safe with. So that's been really nice too. I'm really proud of that as well. We've uh, been asking our followers to send in names that they feel like are great educators. You know, it gets so heavy. Right. And to just be reminded that there is good things happening as well, I think has been really important. So um, just shout out to all of the orgs yeah. who we've just contact, been in touch with, because like I said, this work is really lonely and really painful. And I think that we all kind of have a lane and it's like, oh, you're not doing this but we do this so right. we can kind yeah, of fill that together. in. Yeah. Yeah. Rather than like, oh, we all have to do it by ourselves. So we really call ourselves just kind of, kind of like a collaboration of sorts. Mm-hmm. We just started collaborating with uh, Revolutionaire, which is an amazing org. They are just so awesome. So yeah, we're just trying to, that was a long explanation. That I hope is, I no, answered that's your perfect. question. That's totally, that's, that's totally, perfect. That's totally perfect. And I uh, uh, want to want remind to everyone remind or let everyone know who's joined who may have just joined us that we are here talking about the dance safe and the resource that the dance safe provides to the dance community um i am alone here today i don't have my co-host Bree from apollo so i'm doing the best that i can but if you have your comments questions please put them in the chat we'll try to get them up here for chat as soon as we possibly can as soon as we possibly can so you talked about the the just being a dance safe and being a repository for the stories and the and the, and the, the need and to be the, able to, the need to be clear able the heart to and clear the clear mind when you've been, when you've experienced, experienced trauma, trauma um, and having a safe, um, place, having to a safe that. place to do Are that. Are the resources Are that the, the Dance Safe the offers dance free for the, for the dance community? Is it a space that you can come to? Um, is it a counseling space or is it simply a space of commune? So in the beginning, we were taking disclosures and trying our best to connect people with the places they needed to go to get the healing that they were looking for. Mm -hmm. And, you know, after how long has it been now? Almost two years. I don't even know anymore, a year and a half, whatever. So 
you know, we were like, this work is really not sustainable. Like we, Mm -hmm. this is so much work. So we started selling t-shirts to try to make money because we pay, you know, we did a whole uh, series with Brianna Myers, which was amazing. And we wanted to pay her for her work. So, you know, we're trying to um, make money so that we can give money back out to the community. Um, So we have started, we do offer free resources. We have lives, we have, you know, if you need to contact us, you're looking for something in particular, maybe we don't have that. So we're going to send you, you know, freedom Mm -hmm. movement would be great for this. YPAD would be great for this. Mm -hmm. DEA would be great. So we try to get people where they need to go. Mm -hmm. As far as one-on-one sessions, I still take disclosures for, um, free of charge. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not a therapist, so I know that that's a kind of, uh, delicate, very delicate space, right. yeah. um, to take on. So I usually say, you know, about 20 minutes. And then if you want to move further then we are going to ask for some kind of, you know, donation or money, right. um, depending on what is available to you, if that's totally unavailable, then we don't want your money. We just want to help you heal. Right. Right. And also if you can't afford it, please like help us out. Um, we exist on this sliding scale, but really right. isn't about the money. And also, you know, this is emotional labor mm-hmm. and it's, it's difficult what the work that we're doing. Um, so yeah, the resources that we have online are, are there and our website has connections to these organizations that we love so much. And, um, you know, if you want to contact rain, they have a, um, a helpline. If you want to contact DWA, they have it aligned. So just different, beautiful things happening. Yes, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. So, so, you know, what I hear is, of, of course, there's the need for financial, financial resources. resources. Um, and if you can give them absolutely wonderful, but all of those are reinvested back into the organization to make it bigger and better and make the impact even greater. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, we absolutely. really try to give our money out um, to mutual aid and okay, yep. to support organizations doing the work work and also to support each other. You know, we're trying to take care of each other as well. And, um, everyone on the dance safe is working as volunteers. Like none of us are making mm-hmm. any money and that, cause that wasn't what it was about. Yeah, so yeah, it really right. is about donating out and, um, yeah. Right. yeah. So we talked with, uh, another wonderful organization she mentioned earlier, self-reclaim Vanessa De Leon, um, from self-reclaim had, had an amazing, amazing conversation, conversation with her back, her in, back July in July about the importance of fostering a survivorship mentality. Uh, we talked a lot about the, the use of the word victim versus survivor um, and, and fostering that mentality. So the dance safe does a lot of work to provide important resources to survivors of abuse and trauma in the dance world through education, healing, and accountability, which we talked about. In what ways specifically, because you talked about some one-on-ones, you talked about disclosure, what are the specific ways, any other that you actually, functions that you perform to do this in this space? Um, so lately the conventions I've been working for celebrity has been amazing. They okay. sold t-shirts for us, donated all of the money back to the dance safe. They provided an opportunity for me to do seminars, um, mm-hmm. on celebrity heat has also provided the opportunity to do seminars, um, okay. during the convention, which has been super powerful. And it always starts out with like, I don't know anything. I just know that I want to help. And this is Mm -hmm. about building community. And I feel like every seminar this past year was just so powerful to hear different educators and studio owners sharing stories, sharing ideas, sharing what works, sharing what didn't work, sharing Mm -hmm. issues that they're having you know, just trying to point them in the direction of these incredible organizations to get you know, to get this plethora of information because there's so much. So um, that's really where the education comes in. We try to share posts. We have our youth director. I want to say they're like 16 or 17. They Mm -hmm. make incredible posts uh, like directed at the youth about the Mm -hmm. brain and about what happens. And um, we have our accessibility team who works with many different orgs as well. And they're constantly creating educational resources. So we're all just trying to kind of, you know, whisper and learn and whisper and learn and whisper and learn. And it's been an amazing journey and to pass on information, Mm -hmm. I think has been really powerful and to have these conversations. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, that's really what we've been, what I've been focusing on as, as my role in the dance safe is taking it into the convention and studio space. Right. Yeah. Which is, I mean, you have to go where the people are and that's where the people are. Thousands, 
by the thousands you have you have people who are there an audience that, that needs the information so with that being said unfortunately unfortunately very sadly um there are way too many uh young dancers in the dance space who have experienced abuse and trauma some of them are talking some of them are not some of them want to talk, some of them are not ready to, and, and all of those places are perfectly okay. But what do you, or how do you suggest, or what do you suggest are the first steps for a person who has experienced abuse and trauma in this industry? What's the first thing that they should do if they are ready to disclose? I think the first thing they should do is ask themselves what they want to do. I'm a survivor and it took me 10 years to come to terms with what I didn't even really think about it. Mm -hmm. So I really think it's, it's up to that person to decide what it is that they want and what it is that they're looking for. Mm -hmm. And to feel as if they're going to be, to know that they're going to be supported. I think so many times we want to support and we don't always know how. And right. I think that's really, you know, a beautiful thing about being on the other side is that we can learn so much about how to support people mm -hmm. as human beings. So I wouldn't know, I don't really know what the first step is. I think it just depends on, on what they're searching for. Some people, you know, contact the dance safe. They're like, I want you to post my story. You know, mm -hmm. when, am I allowed to name drop? Well, I'm not going to name drop. Um, there was a story that happened a year and a half ago, right when the dance safe was started. And this person mm -hmm. had been working in the industry for 20 years. Everyone mm -hmm. knew this person was causing harm. Mm -hmm. No one had spoken up. People would whisper, but they still have them into the studio. And one person messaged us and was like, I want you to post this on your story. Mm -hmm. And it went bananas. It right. blew up so much that the FBI got involved. And now I don't know where the case is, but I know that this person is no longer working as far as I've heard. So that's kind of been some things. Some people just want to share. And it's like, I just want to share this information. It's like, do you need emotional support? Can I connect you with a therapist? Can I connect you with a counselor? What, what are you looking for? So it really is just centering what it is. I, I always try to try to You know, when someone says, for example, like, I want to share my story online. Yes, that's awesome. You're so brave. That's so courageous. And also, you know, I just want to make sure that we're aware of, of kind of that trauma that, that can that be means. taken up and people kind of shaming mm -hmm. you for that and taking sides and, you know, just kind of giving as many options, but still just it's in the hands of the survivor. It's always right. in their hands, whatever right. they want. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think this is a, a great lead into something that I'm also wondering about. When survivors do come forward, there can be a range of reactions by the people that they're actually disclosing to from kind of, uh, this is really sad, indifference yeah, to a disbelief, mm -hmm. to extreme to, anger, to mm -hmm. devastation, to, to sadness. sadness. Like there's so many so range of emotions when they disclose. Mm -hmm. And emotions are natural, but do you think that sometimes certain emotions can cause more harm Yes. to the survivor when they disclose than yes. others. I think that's where we have to remember that it's about centering the survivor because, mm -hmm. you know, you hear about your favorite dance teacher causing harm. I've looked up to this person my whole life. There's no way, there's mm -hmm. no way that could happen. And it's like, well, you know, just because you weren't harmed doesn't mean other people other weren't people harmed. Were. And I think that when we learn empathy and we learn compassion and we learn camaraderie and teamwork and community, mm -hmm. it's only natural to say, I'm so sorry that happened to you. How can I support you? Mm -hmm. What do you need from me? What, how can I be of service to you rather than, oh my God, tell me more. How did it happen? When did it happen? It's, mm -hmm. it's none of that. It's right, not right. about, I think what we are lacking is, is the ability to take ourselves out of the picture and recognize that it's not always about us. Mm -hmm. I can still love myself and have enough space to love you. And if I center your pain, mm -hmm. because your pain is my pain, right. Then maybe we have more of a chance to actually help each other heal because, you know, therapy is a privilege. 
Mm-hmm. Being with a psychiatrist, that's expensive. Like that's a privilege, yes. right? And I don't necessarily know if I believe in all of that. I think that we can help each other heal however we need and however mm-hmm. we all need. But I definitely think the way we respond is so important. And the first thing I was taught is to say, thank you for sharing this with me. I believe you, mm-hmm. you know, so many yeah. times I hear people like, oh my, like, you know, there's false reports and sure there is sure. But can we just for one second, just listen to this person and accept what they're saying Mm -hmm. before we go on our own investigation. It's not, it's not, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's been hard. That's been hard. I think for me, when I get a lot of bystander like messages, like, oh my God, I saw this happen. And this, I'm like, well, why didn't you send an email to the convention? Why are you looking? Why why are you, why why are you you knowing me? Don't tell me like, talk to like, send the survivor. They're like, oh, I don't even know the survivor. I'm like, well, you witnessed this child getting Mm -hmm. spoken to in this way by this convention teacher, or you witnessed a convention teacher hyper-sexualizing children. Right. You can tell us, please feel free, but we have a role as human beings. It's not even a responsibility anymore. It's just about existing as humans. If I see Mm -hmm. harm, then I'm going to, I'm going to speak up and say, Hey, I saw this at your convention. Are you mm-hmm. aware? Mm-hmm. And I just wonder why that doesn't happen more. Mm-hmm. I, I understand. Um, it, you know, I don't think everyone's like, Oh, the survivors are so brave. Why do they have to be? Why can't we right. Someone stand else. up more? For, you know what I mean? Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Where's, Where's the, the, line the line there, Kat? Do you think I'm totally, totally, totally going off on a tangent, tangent now, yeah. um, but where's the line? Do you think of being an advocate or standing up for a survivor, a survivor or someone you, or someone see, you see experiencing harm, harm and, and- the word, not the word I'm looking for, but the word that comes to mind, like outing or prematurely calling attention, attention to or disclosing for on behalf of someone who's experienced trauma. Where's the line there? Because I might see something, but if that person is not ready, then should I really say something to someone? Because now have I, have I, have I produced a more traumatic environment for that survivor? Yeah, I think as advocates, we, it's about centering education. Mm -hmm. And I heard someone say this one time, it's not education that's powerful. It's what we do with our education that's powerful. Mm -hmm. And if I want to be a good advocate, then I know that I need to learn about as much as I can. I need to study with freedom movement because I need to learn about what they're talking about. I need to Mm -hmm. study with DWEA because I need to learn. And as I learn, as we learn from more people, we might be able to make those decisions. If I witness something at a convention, such as a hypersexualized dance class, mm-hmm. okay, I think that that's my role as a person existing in the room to say something. Mm-hmm. If I witness, you know, this happens all the time to me. I get misgendered at my own conventions, mm-hmm. my own, the right. people that I work for will misgender me. Mm-hmm. And, and, there's no one advocating for me. And I've asked for that. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's clear. We've had the conversation that I need you to advocate for me. And I, it still happens. I think in those Mm -hmm. spaces, it's, it's about the conversation. Hey, like maybe I don't want to be outed with my pronouns. I'm centering myself just because I want to, um, not because I want to center myself, but I think maybe as an example, but right. You know, if you witness, I think assistance on conventions are really high risk for harm. And I think if, you know, if I witness, okay, I was at a job, I witnessed something happening. Mm -hmm. I brought it up to my boss. Hey, I witnessed this happening. I brought it up to the person that caused the harm. I witnessed you doing this. Mm -hmm. And then I spoke to the person that it happened to. And I said, are you comfortable having a conversation with me? I just, I'm here to keep, I want to help you. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to have to write about your story on the dance safe. Granted, this kid has been training with me for eight years. So I Mm -hmm. felt that we were able to have that conversation and, um, it was great, but it doesn't always go like that. So I think that we have to know too, in being advocates, there's a chance that we might cause harm and we need to be held accountable for that too. Mm -hmm. I am certain there's times I've caused harm without meaning to, Mm -hmm. and have had to be held accountable. Like I have to shout out to Jojo Diggs and Jade because the two of them really, have held me accountable in a lot of spaces that I wasn't able to be held accountable. And they really changed the lens for me, which has been so incredible. I'm so grateful to their, to their friendship and education. Mm -hmm. Um, 
But yeah, I, I think the more we know, why Pat always says this, the more we know, the more we can do, right? Mm-hmm. Maybe maybe the more I, I'm aware of something, then, then I can use my, my awareness and my education to make a decision and know that I might screw up. Right. But might screw up. Right. 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 But and always ask that's the a survivor fear. first, you know? Yeah. So always ask the, the survivor first. That's your, that's your first step. I, I but if it's a generalized, like if you're watching right. a teacher ask children to do things that are unco- like, right. Send an email and have 20 of your friends send an email too. If you right. see someone getting misgendered over and over, if you see teachers still calling out boy and girl groups, I hope people are sending emails. Like mm-hmm. I really, really, really do. Mm-hmm. And I don't, I don't no, think I don't that's think happening. happening. It's not. Uh, yeah, I, I, definitely I definitely don't, don't think, think because it's still happening at, at conventions all the time. Um, so I don't think that's happening. And what do you think it's going to take to make that happen? That has to be a massive shift. That has to be a massive mindset shift to understand, hey, this is this is this is not necessarily safe for everyone to do something like this. And mm-hmm. what people consider to be very benign, boy and girl groups, you know, they consider that very benign, but not understanding the trauma that that can cause to people who are in a questioning state, who are transitioning, who are like, they, they're not clear on what that means. So what do you think it's going to take to actually make that shift? They're like, no, I don't know. I'm, I'm really like, and I don't want to come off in this way. I'm just really starting to lose my patience because it's like, I feel like a lot of the time when, when I work on jobs, people are kind of like, Oh, say something, like, say something about this. Like, did you see that that happened? Like, Oh, this, I'm like, you say something. Mm -hmm. What? Like you say something, you say something. Mm -hmm. Why do, why do we always like, why is there 10 people that always say something, right? Like, why are we the ones having the conversation? I don't want it Mm -hmm. to be like, Oh, it's only like 20 people doing the work. It's just like, if you see people doing the work, don't you want to join it? Don't, Mm -hmm. what is I've just, and maybe this is just how I was raised, but I've never, ever thought twice about speaking up about something I see. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. I just, I I care about people and I care about the good stuff. I don't know Mm -hmm. what the right stuff is, but maybe I don't even know what the good stuff is. But even at my university, like in class, this, this teacher accosted one of the students, like attacked them. And I put myself in the middle and all the 50 rest of the kids are watching and they're like, right. and I'm like, why aren't you all standing in the middle? Why aren't we all standing in the middle? And I, th- I what is it going to take education, courage, the, the ability to see your self-worth and know that your voice is important and that mm-hmm. you're, if you're outcasted, that that's, that's not real. We can't be outcasted. Mm. We, We can't be canceled from anything, right? Cancel culture isn't real. Accountability culture is. And I think when we all realize that we all mess up, but we can do it together and Mm -hmm. we can stand together. Mm -hmm. Hey, this is happening. It doesn't affect me, but it affects my friend. You know, Mm -hmm. so many of my friends have sent emails. Like I am sending an email. I cannot stand listening to you getting misgendered. You Mm -hmm. know, I can't stand watching our friends like, You know, I, I I watched a video one time at a job and I was like, seems like you're missing a few people in the video. And I think that's really problematic. And Mm -hmm. my friend was like, wow, I can't believe like you said that. I'm like, why didn't six more of my friends, you know what I mean? They also noticed noticed it. Why didn't they, they, why didn't they they say it? I think that, and this has happened in many movements of liberation. Um, a lot of racial justice movements and all those spaces, it's, Everybody's waiting on the leader, the person to come, you know, and in the racial, the next Martin Luther King, like who, okay, but you can't wait on that person. You can't wait on the leader. No, um, we all have, have to, to do it. Yeah. yeah. We all it's have to be, all committed, have to be to committed to it. We all are leaders. And when we hide behind each other and like put people up on the front lines to be sacrificed, like aren't you just mm. as, aren't you just as guilty as the rest of them at the end of the day? Because we're exhausted. Aren't you tired? Like, aren't we tired? And, and we always say at the dance, safe, just pick a lane, just pick mm-hmm. one. You want to talk about abuse and gender. And you want to talk about, 
um, racial injustice. You want to talk, pick a lane. There's so many, just pick one and fight for that. And maybe if we all pick lanes, we're Mm -hmm. all going to meet right here at the Mm -hmm. front lines. Be like, okay, we all took different roads, but we're all fighting for Mm -hmm. safety and inclusion and justice and love. Mm -hmm. And for the next generation to be raised, Right. Cause I always say it too. Like I'm not fighting for myself anymore. It's not even about me. It's about these kids. Every time you misgender me on this job, the six kids in this room that use they, them pronouns sink a little lower into their bodies, mm-hmm. a little lower, a little lower. Yep. It's not yeah, about value. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It, 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 do you think that to your, to your point of, you know, kind of pushing people to the front line, sacrificing sacrificing the people who are always there telling them to stand up versus yourself do you think that that um produces fatigue in those of you who are on the front line and do you think that that makes the work not sustainable yes I do I've talked to so many of my friends I feel so I feel so great in this past year to have met people that I've met even going into grad school, you know, I, I kind of looked around, I was like, okay, like this looks very white and I'm a little confused. And uh, are we safe here? Like, is everyone safe? And, you know, one person has been like, we have been allies together. And it's so amazing to have this person because we can exchange our emotional labor. And it's like, this is laboring. Like we literally got two people removed. One of them, like, the lead doctorate of the program, like is not coming back because we need to like figure out some stuff. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my friends too, that run these organizations, it feels so nice. Like I can call Tiffany from YPAD anytime I call her my mom and I'm like, I need your support. I need to understand this. Can you help me? Mm -hmm. And she's so, I did, I did my final presentation on the sexualization of of, um, girls, females assigned at birth. I I didn't Mm -hmm. mean to quote that, but like, I mean, girls, but assuming females assigned at birth Mm -hmm. and Tiffany and Leslie and Dr. Tina and Lisa, they were so quick to like, be like, yes, we got you. So Uh it's so nice to have that, but yeah, the work is, I mean, how can it not be emotionally laboring, especially when it's personal? And I think that's what it is too. Like those of us that are doing the work, it's really personal to Mm -hmm. us maybe. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that, that's a different, that's a different impact yeah. when it's, when it's actually personal to you. Talking about all the organizations that you work with and all of the, the collaboration you mentioned earlier, co- coalition, uh, there's a coalition. So we have uh, Dance Bay, the Dance Safe, YPAD, uh, DEA, Army of Survivors, Self Reclaim, Momentum Stage, uh, all of, all of these, all of these have, have been part of the show, have been part of the education of this community. Is there, speaking of your lane, are there lanes in that? How do you know if you are a survivor or you have experienced some trauma or you do need support or you do need resources or you're a teacher who's looking for education? How do you know which lane to go in? How do you know who to contact? I think the beautiful thing about social media is that we're able to kind of share, I don't want to say the word brand, but you can kind of tell when you go to a page, right? You're like, Ooh, I vibe with this. I don't, this feels really harsh or Mm -hmm. this feels really, um, I don't know. It feels really not inclusive or, you know Mm -hmm. what I mean? I think depending on where we are in our, in our lens, Mm -hmm. I, I feel like it might, you might be able to decide where you want to go. Like, okay, we're dealing with this issue. I know that I need to go to freedom movement. I've seen the work that they're doing. I've watched their lives. I feel very connected to their, to who they are. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to reach out to them and see if they can help me. They might not be able to help me with what I need. So they're going to send me somewhere else. else, We don't want to pass around people too much, but we do want to send them to the places. And I I've seen that with DWEA. Jerry Brown is absolutely one of my favorite people. She's the one that's called it the coalition. She's like, we're building a coalition. I was like, yes, yes. Perfect. And there's been so many times that I'll call her like sobbing and we like talk through these things together. She's like, okay, I have this information. And then I call YPAD and they're like, I have this information. And then I call freedom movement and it's like self-reclaimed and we're all like, Ooh, we have all this information. Um, I, so I think it's really up to the person. What it was, what is it that you're looking for? Mm-hmm. When you check out the social media, what do you see that calls you or, or pushes mm-hmm. you away? We're allowed to feel, you know, responses in our nervous system. We're allowed. That's mm-hmm. natural. Um, right. And then once you kind of feel out that vibe, 
just reach out. It's okay. Mm -hmm. All of these people are kind. I like, I can promise that every single one of these organizations we've named are just really kind people who want to do good in the world and who are fighting to do good in the world. Mm-hmm. Oh, I just love all of these orgs. I think they're just so awesome at what they do. They specialize, you know, yeah, it's exactly. They're they specializing specialize. in something. Right. Yeah. Right. And that's yeah. why we've been just so fortunate to have representatives from each one of them. Uh, oh, on yeah. the show so you know we're 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 extremely happy um and and really really fortunate to have have had that so when you're what do you think you're sitting there you're a convention director or owner and it's and you're being challenged to make a change in your behavior or in your model in order to keep people safe what's keeping them from doing it is it money is it notoriety is it what's keeping them from doing it money Mind. every time I will never forget this okay first of all I just want to say Drew my boss at celebrity when I came out about my pronouns like he like sat down the faculty I like came to him crying I was like I can't keep being misgendered by my friends like this is really painful and he was like done sat down was like do not keep screwing this up we're going to talk about this like everyone was so cool and just supportive and Drew like Anytime someone misgenders me, like he'll, if we're taking a picture and someone's like, oh, he'll like grab my arm. He's like, I see you. Like, you're okay. Other jobs I've worked for, like there was a conversation one time right before I went on to teach. And this person said, can we not do the pronouns thing today? You know, it makes the kids uncomfortable. Can we not do the pronouns? We lost, you know, all this business because you, uh, had them introduce themselves with their pronouns that made them uncomfortable. I was like, well, that's pretty funny. I, half of my class, we talk about consent. If you don't consent to sharing something and the response was, well, they don't want people to judge them. And I was like, well, they must not be listening to the message that we're talking about because when you consent or do not consent, or when you make a decision for what it is that you stand for, we have to recognize that people are not going to like it and they might turn their backs and walk away. And we have to be okay with that. Mm -hmm. And I think continuously what I face in the industry, even being in college too, is that money always comes first. Mm -hmm. And we, we, it's very rare. I think that we get to work with people who see us as human beings, because for so long, we're just seen as products all of the time, especially when you teach on a convention, you know, it's the zoo where the animals behind the the cage, where the animals in the cage, you put them out you introduce and there they are. And everybody, and there's all the clowns running around (laughs) helping right in the backstage and everyone's running around and the tiger gets upset. And I'm the tiger. Sometimes I get upset and it's like, well, you know, you acted in this way. It's like, well, I, I worked for a convention. It was all about centering wellness and it was all about centering and, you know, change and inclusion. And then when I said something, they came at me and I was like, you have to center your faculty. Like right. if we don't feel safe, how do you expect us to make any help anyone Ooh, else to feel safe? safe? Right. And I think that's forgotten a lot because the faculty is, faculties are put up on this place. Mm-hmm. We're not on this place. We're all right here. So when we all work at this level right here, you know, Hey, I, 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 I want to support you in your pronouns. I want to support you in what you're talking about. How can we work together in a way that we speak to everyone? Cause this is difficult. This is difficult. And I want to support you. And I want you to know that money doesn't come over you. It's mm-hmm. the change that we're trying to make. I, I just want to see more of that, especially in the convention shape. I mean, even with what we're seeing going on in conventions right now, we've seen a lot of people get called out and it's just kind of like crickets. Like everyone's just kind of like, like, well, well now, now what do we do? Like, you know, and it's just kind of like, well, what do we do? Um, that's where I'd like to see like more of the, the team step up. Right. 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 Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. money, uh, money, I have to agree with you. That's, why, with you. that's, that's why, why, why I suggested, that's why suggested that's it first. Suggested money is first. definitely, money is the, definitely the, the, the determining, determining factor, factor there. there. I, think mm-hmm. I think that my that opinion, opinion is at the is studio, at the level, studio level, level where the money, where the power, money power is. is. We have to choose to direct our dollars in a way that is in a, in a, in a, a safe way versus the celebrity way. I'm not going to choose the convention because X name person is on it. I'm going to choose it because this is where my students are going to be the most safe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And 
I don't know where that should maybe more education with organizations like from organizations like the dance day to have studio owners and parents who will put pressure on studio owners, studio owners to be held accountable to make that different decision. Because right now, I mean, I know that as a as a competition director and a teacher in the studio, oh, okay, we'll go to the convention that has blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. And we're saying, and they want to say you think you can dance and they want world of dance and they were, and that's not necessarily how we want to make decisions about where we send, but that's where we're getting the pressure from the parents and the students to make decisions. And I think that we have to be willing to, like you said, push back and say, no, we're not going there because... And if that means that you want to go to Studio B, who lets you go to these conventions? Fly, fly. Right. Fly, fly. And you know what? Fly, fly. And if you need us, we'll be right here. That's what, that's what I always think too. You know, if this isn't the place for you, that's okay. Mm-hmm. Go find what you're looking for. But at the end of the day, we all hopefully come to some sort of awakening and realize that we're not alone in this world, that we can do so much more together. And I think it's that cracking open that just, Mm -hmm. it just hasn't happened yet. And because we exist in a time where social media is right here and it does create a hierarchy, right? I can't cause harm because I stand up on the stage and look down at everyone else, right? Mm -hmm. But, But no, like I said, we're all on the same, but when we allow that to continue, we allow harm to keep happening. There is a choreographer. I, you know, I should have done my final presentation on this teacher. I I can't even believe they're still called a teacher. They teach on top conventions. They have been sexualizing children. I don't even know how long. Mm -hmm. And the fact that they are still working in this industry as an educator, I will never understand. But how many messages do I get online about this person? Like, Mm -hmm. oh my God, I can't believe this person is teaching. I'm like, do you know, like... (laughs) You still, I think what it is, is, is we don't realize that as the consumers, we hold all of the power. Mm-hmm. Money. It's been flipped Always. upside down. Yeah. It's been flipped upside down. Well, hopefully we can continue um, the wonderful work that the Dance Safe is doing as well as its partnership with other organizations to do great work. As you know, because you've been with us before, we like homework here on Beyond the Steps. So uh, what is the one action that you want our viewers and listeners um, to take between now and next week to make progress in this area? Send one email, send one one message, send one, make one phone call. If you see something happen, we're not talking about the centering of survivors. I'm talking about like in a broad scale, Mm -hmm. if you see something, I challenge you to say something. And I challenge Mm -hmm. you to challenge your friend, to challenge your friend, to challenge your friend. I saw this happen at convention on a broad Mm -hmm. scale send an email just one that's my challenge one email how many hundreds of emails do we send in a week oh my god is asking us to send one email just one just one one. just one and ask someone else to send one so then that's totally two and tell them to do do it together (laughs) let's just do it together like message me at the dance safe and say i'm sending an email i'll be like i will send one too i got your back you know what Mm -hmm. i mean got each other so Mm -hmm. yeah send an email thank you Thank you so much. Uh, In addition to the resources that the Dance Safe offers, uh, we'll talk about those a little bit. We have the Steps Initiative, Initiative, um, um, Apollo, lots of great free free education. education That link link is in the chat now. now. YPAD, we're talking about YPAD and the wonderful people at YPAD and all of the amazing trainings that they have, as well as the ways that they have helped CAT um, through um, through their journey. So please visit YPAD. Take advantage of the wonderful, we have have a break. I don't know if dance educators ever really have a break. Um, But we do have a break now. Please explore some of those courses. This is the time for that. You have a 25% off discount code, Apollo 25 to get 25% off courses there. And let's talk about the Dance Safe. Where can they find the Dance Safe? Where can they take advantage of the resources? How can they contact you? Uh, We're on Instagram at the Dance Safe. We have a website, thedancesafe.com. We have a link tree with other resources that we work with. We just paired up with Revolutionaire. Oh my gosh. I'm literally in obsessed with this org. It's like a, like a blog chat room mm-hmm. for like mostly the youth and mm-hmm. it's different topics, racial okay. injustice, abuse, okay. um, different things. And the kids can come in and talk and the dance safe now has their own little section in there where kids can come in and share their experiences and we're just overlooking it to make sure that it stays safe and uh-huh. uh, safe for everyone. Um, also, you know, I know YPAD certifies 
dance studios, DEA is certifying mm-hmm. dance conventions. Like that is mm. so cool to me. Dance Safe doesn't, I, I don't know if we really want to do any of that. We just kind of want to be like, yeah, like, right. Yes. <laughs> you want to be the, the, cheer, the, cheer, the cheer, team cheer team of yeah. everyone else. Yeah. Yeah. And also just like, we're going to call it out. Like if we see it, we're going to say something. We mm-hmm. all, we're all like that. So, mm-hmm. which is super cool too, but we're like, yeah, that's awesome. Like, let's, whoa, like, you mm-hmm. know, let's have a conversation. We have this kind of um, town hall chat on Instagram mm-hmm. with all the orgs and like someone will jump in and be like, hey, I saw this. What do you think? And it's like, whoa. And then we all type back. It's just mm-hmm. so yeah, there's so many. And those resources are all on our Instagram, all on our website. You can check out, if you check out the people that we're following, it's mm-hmm. mostly all right. of these people that we love so much. Wonderful. Social media is a powerful tool. Use it, everyone. Use it for good. Use it for good. Um, thank you so much, Kat. We hope to have you on again in 2022. This is our last show of 2021. I cannot believe it. I can't believe I had to do the last show without my sidekick, Brie. You uh, nailed she- it. <laughs> You're incredible. I tried. I tried. Uh, but both of us will be back in January. January 7th is our first show back. That's the first Friday in 2022. Uh, we do want to say uh, on the way out, happy holidays to everyone. Whatever you're doing during this winter break, spending time with your family, celebrating some type of cultural observance or religious observance or whatever it is, take time for yourself. Uh, in the meantime, if we have other topics that you want us to talk about, people that you think would be great on the show, please e- email us info at apollaperformance.com um, um, or you can email T tpdc at melissa mcdaniel 360.com if you have ideas for any guests or any topics please let us know like i said next show is going to be january 7th uh, it's going to be how power dynamics impact learning in the competition and convention settings we have michelle Lacado and Kristen deese danson um to talk about talk about this topic uh, we just had to call carry on from the stage talking about uh, uh boundaries and you know consent for contact and how power dynamics works uh in that so we are um happy to have this show coming up to start the year and uh do your homework send your one email rest take care of yourself and we hope that you uh, continue to take your journey beyond the steps see you in 2022 bye-bye Thank you so much. Yes, thank you. I hope that was okay. It was. It was. I know I'm kind it of was. in a sassy place. I hope that. <laughs> it's perfectly okay. Let me um I'm go. so I tired. Find of my Zoom. You're welcome. Bye-bye.